Michael Wolf, uh, welcome back home, would I say, yeah. because you have participated several times in outreach. Yeah, it's really great to be back in the Tyrol, and uh, it's about maybe my sixth or seventh time here. It's been a few years since I've been here, but it's great to be back. Um, in the last years, you had no time for um, this, for the lectures and... Well, I, actually, in the last five years, my family in New York did a television show that was on Nickelodeon, and it starred my children, who are now 16 and 13 years old, and my wife created the show and wrote it and directed it and produced it, and I played the father on the show acting and did the underscore of the music. My, my sons wrote all the songs. So we were heavily involved with making a film and then three seasons of a television show, and we shot always during the summer, so I was unable to tour or come to Europe at all. So this is the first year that I've had the opportunity now to be back on the road in the summer. And this uh, TV show um, shows your family life. Yeah, yeah. It show, well, it was sort of, uh, I mean, it's a little fake. It was funny. It was a mock documentary, pretend documentary, of a, of a children's rock and roll band that's supposed to be as famous as the Beatles. And it was called the Naked Brothers Band. So, but the interesting thing was, I mean, I played a totally different character. I actually played a character named Sonny Wolf, and I wore my hair down like that, and I wore lederhosen all the time and played the accordion. And I was always begging my kids to see if I could get into their rock band, and they never let me. So I used a lot of the influence from Franz Hockel and his parents and the Tyrol and the marching bands that I saw here for my outfits and for my concept. So This I wanted to hear. <laughs> okay, okay. Because uh, uh, when I think uh, you uh, have been born in New Orleans, uh -huh, you were yeah. raised up in San Francisco, yeah and um, in Memphis, Tennessee, and you're living in New York, now in Manhattan. Um, what did you influence most? Which of these musical cities? Right. Well, you know, I've been influenced by a lot of, diff by a lot of different music, but when I was a small child growing up in, my, in the South, my father influenced me. He was raised in a little town in Mississippi called Indianola, Mississippi. And from that little town came B.B. King, Albert King and Muddy Waters, three of the greatest blues musicians of all time. So he grew up really with the, the black people's community of music. That's what he was into. So when I was a little kid, he, would, he, he, he was a doctor later on, but he had perfect pitch. He was a great musician. So when I was four years old, he showed me the St. Louis blues. Do, 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 He showed me that on the piano and had me listen to B.B. King and Ray Charles, people like that, Count Basie. Oscar Peterson. He also loved uh, George Shearing. So the influences I had really early on were, were bluesy and jazz. And then as I got older and I got into different kinds of other jazz pianists like Bill Evans and McCoy Tyner and Chick Corea and Herbie Hancock and, and, and stuff like that. You know, Keith Jarrett, of course, I listened to all of them. But I think the underlying uh, thing in my music, I always have to have some feeling of the blues because that's how I was raised. So let's come to the small ensembles. Uh, you played with Franz Hackel as a duo. Mm. Yeah, I've been playing with Franz Hackel for many, many years. I had a band for years called Michael Wolf and Impure Thoughts, where we had Badal Roy on tablas and uh, different percussionists. Mino Sanulo was playing percussion, and I used Franz Hackel often on trumpet. That's when we became friends. And then he and I started just playing together at my house, just trumpet and, and uh, piano. And uh, last year we played at a festival that you were there for, for, uh, with just trumpet and piano. We started to do that. And the, what happened was when I came to the Tiro for the first time, I saw that there were a lot of marching bands that were marching around in Schwarz and in Innsbruck, and I started listening to the Tyrolean folk songs. And when I heard those, I said, that's where the great Joe Zawinul, I think, got a lot of his music for Weather Report. And these beautiful soaring melodies. Da, 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 de, da, da, da. So Franz and I took these Tyrolean folk songs, and he started playing the trumpet melody, and I would just improvise jazz or whatever 20th century, 21st century harmonies underneath it. And I think we've developed a, a fantastic approach to music in general from that way of doing it, where we, we played the other night, we played a uh, Puccini aria from a, an opera. We played some uh, Bach, a Bach piano, uh, trumpet sonata. And what we do is we take that music, we take the, the beautiful melodies from it, and then I improvise underneath it. And so we've developed, a, I think, a real system and a real interesting method of approaching the duo situation. Uh, the motto of this 
Outreach Festival is expeditions. You will participate in one expedition. What was this challenge? Well, the challenge was just to say, how does how can music, you know, any kind of uh, programmatic music is, how does the music relate to a real life event? You know, music often is abstract. Igor Stravinsky, they would say, well, what does your music mean? He says, the music is the meaning. So when I've scored film and television, it's a very interesting process. You can be intellectual about it. You can know what your mind says. Well, in this scene, let's just say we saw Peter, uh, you know, climbing up a mountain. You'd see that happening. But, but I think as a musician, I have to say, like I was talking about what's underneath the words, what's underneath the music, what's underneath the scene, what's underneath the feeling of someone who's going to be climbing up a mountain, the music that we do. So to me, that's what I have to feel. I have to, I have to find that subconscious meaning or that subconscious feeling or the, and then translate that into an actual musical sound. It's, it's an interesting experience to do that. So the same thing with just briefly meeting Peter and seeing, you know, hearing how he was able to climb Mount Everest and do all this different stuff, we would hopefully have a feeling that we improvise or that we put into it that relates to maybe the majesty, the, the hugeness of what he did, and yet he's an ordinary person in a lot of ways, so he has a lot of, you know, to do any big, to do anything big, it takes a lot of little bitty steps. Just like to make a big symphony, it's a lot of notes in a row, you know? So that's how I was thinking of it. Uh, but you will also do an expedition with a trio. Yes. And uh, there, there you will not have so many notes <laughs> like in a symphony. Yeah, we're going to just improvise. We don't have a plan. In fact, we're going to do a sound check and maybe see. But no, that's going to just be the feeling of how I'm going to follow uh, the trum trombone and drums and just... Uh, I like the feeling of the music playing me, that I don't play the music, but I sit and I wait for the, my emotions or my ears or whatever for it all to just start happening. So I'm hoping that's what's going to happen. So that's being, as, it's almost like Zen Buddhism. You know, when you're, when you're a musician, there's a thing in Zen Buddhism called beginner's mind. And that means that no matter how well trained you are, every time you go to meditate, you start from zero. You have to turn off your mind and be quiet. And just be in that moment. And to me as an improviser, when I'm succeeding, I hope that I will be able to be in the moment and forget everything I've ever learned and just discover it. And that's the way I like to perform. <laughs> 